What's going on guys? Welcome to Everything Always. My name is Michael Roman, aka Allfires. Now when I was doing research for this video, I actually looked back at about the last 7-10 to 10 months of scoops surrounding Spider-Man 4 because today's video is about the director for the original Spider-Man trilogy in John Watts and as I had thought, Many industry insiders indicated that John Watts was headed back to direct Spider-Man 4. Now, obviously, in the last couple of months, we've heard about extensive rifts between Sony and Marvel, what they want to do with the story, what the plan is for Tom Holland's Peter Parker, and whether or not John Watts would be back to direct. And there was a recent quote from Kevin Feige surrounding the San Diego Comic-Con and D23 of it all that basically said they were probably going to go in a different direction than John Watts, but didn't rule it out. Keep in mind, this was after he also departed the Fantastic Four when he was originally signed to direct that project as well. We'll queue up the latest article breaking from The Hollywood Reporter under the headline, Why Director John Watts Turned His Back on Marvel. We're going to break down what they say in this article because I think it's extremely, extremely pertinent to what's going on with Marvel Studios, why in Phase 4 and Phase 5 it felt like they had a hard time finding directors or would hire people with very little experience, and why going forward, the very same reason that John Watts gives is why it may be harder and harder for them to find the directors that they want for future Marvel projects. We're breaking it all down, this latest article in The Hollywood Reporter. But first, if you could grab the subscribe button, we do daily Marvel content at the channel. That's all we do, everything from official Easter egg breakdowns, trailers and reviews, to the occasional industry insider report and everything in between. So if that sort of thing's for you, hit the sub button, leave a comment down below. That will automatically enter you to win our ongoing PS5 giveaway. The next one is right around the corner with Agatha all along. All you gotta do is be a sub, leave a comment. If you want, stick around at the end of the video. We get into all the giveaway stuff again there. Quick side note, guys, if you notice, my voice uh, does sound a little bit different today. I'm on like day six of band rehearsals. I've got basically no voice left. That's why I didn't do a video yesterday. I am going to push through this one. I apologize for the quality control. I sound a little bit less, uh, less than normal and there's not much I can do about it. Okay, so again, this broke yesterday in The Hollywood Reporter, why John Watts turned his back on Marvel to make Wolves with Brad Pitt and George Clooney, where they go on to report, quote, in December 2021, John Watts found himself standing in the back of the Chinese theater on Hollywood Boulevard on the opening night of his last film, Spider-Man No Way Home. The entry was one of the first major studio theatrical releases following the pandemic shutdown, and the audience was standing, screaming, crying, and generally carrying on in that way, even for a first showing of a fan-favorite superhero movie, was a spectacle all to itself. Quote, that was such a specific moment in time, and the reaction to that movie was just so unbelievable, remembers Watts. It was at this point that the director came to the realization, it's never going to be like this ever again. No Way Home went on to gross nearly $2 billion at the global box office, the sixth highest grossing film of all time and one of Marvel's top movies, trailing only the two last Avengers films. Watts decided not to return for a fourth Spider-Man and, in 2022, exited as the director of another Marvel property, The Fantastic Four. In any industry, it's hard to walk away from something successful. In contemporary Hollywood, where even Robert Downey Jr. is willing to return to the superhero fold, it can be career-threatening. Now from here, the article shifts just a bit and starts to talk about Wolves, starring Brad Pitt and George Clooney. They even go on to say that he was trying to line this up while he was editing No Way Home, jumping on a Zoom call with both actors. But they conclude the article by saying this, Sometimes you do an action movie and all the fun action stuff is given to the second unit director, says Watts. On the Marvel movies, you split up the work because there's so much that needs to be done. Rarely do you get the Christopher Nolan opportunity to do all of it. On this one, referring to Wolves, I was like, I want to shoot every single shot myself. From a tire screeching to a halt, to the star Austin Abrams flipping over the top of the BMW in a practical effect that saw Euphoria actor hanging from various rigs in his underwear, Watts was behind the camera for it all. Back when Watts directed the first Spider-Man entry, Homecoming, he had one indie feature under his belt. Kevin Bacon fronted 2015 crime thriller Cop Car. I was just getting started, Marvel came along, and I take full creative ownership over all those films, but Spider-Man is always going to be Stan Lee and Steve Ditko's creation, he says. This was the chance for me to go back to my voice, my vision, and my style. Wolves is mine and that's a really good feeling. And this is basically at the crux of it all for all types of artists in every industry, is what kind of art do you wanna make? Do you wanna serve the big corporation, 
fit in as a piece of a wheel or a cog and make a piece of art that serves something much greater than what you're trying to do? Or do you want to serve the art first with your own vision and style? And look, I rarely, rarely draw comparisons between movies and music because I think the film industry is infinitely more complicated. You have thousands of people working on a project instead of maybe a handful, 10 or 20 or even less. But I also know, having worked with various producers, that sometimes I just want to make the song I want to make, which means I need to drag my ass into a recording studio and be the producer on the song myself to make those decisions and have ownership over it all. So for John Watts specifically, it's about that ownership. That's what he wants to do as a filmmaker. That's why he's not returning for the new Spider-Man films. That's why he decided not to do the Fantastic Four. Now at the beginning, of this video in the prologue, I specifically stated that this may be a symptom of a greater problem for Marvel, where we already know that very generally, and the bigger the blockbuster is, the more hands that get into it basically becomes movie by committee, and outside of Deadpool and Wolverine, when you look at films like Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, something happens where they sort of delude the project, and what that original voice, that original vision is, is really hard to make it through when you've got movie by committee. That's what happened with Multiverse of Madness, and I actually think it's a credit to Michael Waldron that his story was so good, it was able to shine through with the 20-some rewrites that Marvel Studios did to that film. So, like John Watts, there may be tons of directors in the future who either have an experience with Marvel and say, nope, that's it, I don't wanna do this anymore, who just know better in the first place and don't take the jobs. And that's why you see Marvel struggling to find some directors for these huge movies. That's why you see some incongruence with films like Blade that are unable to even get off of the ground and why, as I mentioned during Phase 4 and Phase 5, they have hired a ton of directors who have rather inexperienced resumes if you cross-reference them to IMDb with very little films under their belt, especially nothing the size of a major Marvel blockbuster. So ultimately, Marvel Studios may be in a position where hopefully they've learned from Deadpool and Wolverine, and if they want to get these huge directors and writers, they allow them to make the projects that they want to make, they allow them the control. Now obviously, John Watts alluded to this with Spider-Man that sometimes when you have a movie this big, you can't do everything. There's just not enough time for the deadline of the movie when it needs to be released and shot. By the time you make it to editing, you have to divvy up some of the responsibility. But on a spectrum, there is a long way between, hey, there's too much to do here, give the responsibilities to some of your team, and hey, we're gonna rewrite the movie 20 times like Multiverse of Madness, and it's the latter that would be frustrating for any artists especially an artist who has a particular voice or vision, it would only be increasingly frustrating for them not to be able to get that voice or vision through, which may be part of the problem we're seeing with why other Marvel projects aren't performing as well as they should have, or why some projects just can't get off the ground like Blade. But you guys let me know all your thoughts down below. Who do you think should direct the next Spider-Man 4 movie? I know I have my picks. I am all ears for who yours are. Quickly, we are still giving away PlayStation 5s, all you gotta do, be a sub, leave a comment. The best way to keep up with the content has always been to hit the notification bell with all notifications turned on. As always, if you like today's video, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button. My name is Michael Roman. You can find me a couple of places, Instagram and Twitter at I'm Fires. You can also find me on all platforms under the name All Fires with original music. And again, guys, I apologize. My voice is absolutely shot. Hopefully it'll be better by tomorrow, but probably not considering that our show is tonight in Atlanta. Quick reminder, if you are gonna be in the Atlanta area, it is Sunday, September 1st. Our show is at aisle five in Little Five Points. Doors at eight, music starts at 8.30. Tickets are super cheap, 15 bucks, and there are some left, but quantities are limited. And if you're already planning on making it to the show tonight, hang out after our set. I'll definitely be there uh, and make sure you say hi. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.